Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to continue with unit three, which is all about population. We are still focusing on our human population dynamics. Um, and today we're actually going to learn some formulas that relate to how we calculate human populations. Um, so today is gonna be an intro. We're gonna do a little bit of practice and then in a couple class periods, we will dedicate an entire day to doing some math practice for these human population dynamics. But for now, we're just getting an intro Intro, so we can go ahead and jump into this. So when we think about human populations, humans in the world have been growing exponentially. So our population has been increasing pretty steadily over time. And some of that is because um, really just more technology and resource availability, healthcare, things like that allow us to have more children and also it allows those children to grow up and have children of their own. So right now the world population is projected to increase from, um, we're almost at 8 billion right now, but to 8.9 billion by 2050. So we're almost to that 8 billion mark. Our world population was 6.6 .6 billion back in 2006. Um, but we have surpassed 7 million and we are on, or 7 billion and we are on our way to to 8 billion right now. So that's a lot. Our world is very highly populated. Some areas are more densely populated than others. Um, but there's just kind of a debate over interactions among population growth, economic growth, politics, and also moral beliefs, um, basically all related to our population. So there's a lot of factors that go into talking about um, our population booms. Is it a good thing? Does it need to be restricted? Should we put restrictions on how many children people can have? Um, you know, do people need to have more children to encourage economic growth? There's just a lot of, of factors that encompass the idea of population booms. So we need to talk about a few things today. Number one is total fertility rate. So you'll see that as TFR. And this is the average number of children born to each female. So in a country, in a population, on average, how many children does each female have during her reproductive years? And replacement fertility is the TFR, the total fertility rate, that keeps the size of a population stable. So TFR is, again, the fertility rate. And that fertility rate for a country's population needs to be around a 2.1 to keep the population stable. So if it's above 2.1, the population would be growing. If it's below a 2.1, the population would be decreasing. So when we think about a decreasing TFR, Oftentimes this will be because women have more access to education um, and they are able to work and make their own money. Um, they wait longer to get married and therefore have children. And they also have access to family planning so they can determine how many children they actually want to have with their husbands. Also medical care can reduce infant mortality. Um, urbanization will increase child care costs and then children go to school instead of working so you don't actually have to have that many children. Used to be you had to um, have a lot of children, especially if you're like farmers because you could use your children to work in the fields and work in the house, but we don't really make children do that anymore because, you know, technology and industry has helped kind of reduce the need for that. So when we talk about crude birth and death rates for um, any kind of population. These are just the increases through the birth and immigration and death and immigration. So populations change based on how many people are born, how many people migrate, so immigrate to the country, and then how many people die and how many people leave the country. So birth, you can also see that as natality, um, how many people are being born, and then immigration, people coming to the country, death is obviously dying, and then immigration is people leaving the country. So if you are immigrating away from your country, you are leaving it. So population change overall will be equal to the number of births plus the immigration minus the deaths plus immigration. And here population change can be positive or negative. You can have populations growing and you can have them shrinking. So instead of using raw numbers, crude birth rates and crude death rates are used. And these are based on the total number of births or deaths per 1,000 people in a population. So 
instead of just using like the actual number, you would basically divide it by a thousand to get your birth rate per 1000 people. So our crude birth rate is going to be the number of births divided by the total population times 1000. And that will give you your um, number of individuals born per person or number of individuals born per thousand people in the population. So this is just a little bit, um, it's a way to kind of keep the numbers a little bit lower and a little bit easier to work with. Your crude death rate would be the same, it's just with number of deaths instead of births. So your crude death rate would be your number of deaths divided by the total population times a thousand. So some other um, formulas we need to know are your natural rate of population growth, and this is going to be equal to our crude birth rate minus our crude death rate divided by the total population size. And populations, again, change due to internal factors. So, you know, do women have access to health care? Are they having a lot of babies? Um, is there some kind of virus that's going around? Different things can play into population growth. The population growth rate will be the crude birth rate plus the immigration rate minus the crude death rate plus the immigration rate. And remember, immigration is when you are leaving a country. So these are the net changes in a population size per thousand people per year. So again, this can be a positive or a negative number. And then if you want to display that growth rate as a percentage, you just take that population growth rate and multiply it by 100%. Um, and then that way the populations of different sizes can be compared. Something we need to be aware of is the rule of 70. And this is based on exponential growth. So basically the rule of 70, if you know what the population rate is in percent, you can determine how long it will take for a population to double. So to find this, you just have to take 70 and divide it by the annual growth rate. So if your annual growth rate is 2%, you just do 70 divided by 2. You don't have to convert it to a decimal form. You just take the raw percentage and you divide 70 by that percent, and then that will give you how long it will take for your population to double. So if a population has a growth rate of 2%, if you do 70 divided by 2, that gives you 35 years. That means every 35 years, you can expect that population to double. So this bottom um, problem here, it says calculate the doubling time for a population growing at 1.4%. So we would do 70 divided by 1.4, and that gives us a value of 50. So that means a population with a growth rate of 1.4% would take 50 years for the population to double. So we can also use growth rate to determine the future size of a population. And we saw this um, when we talked about logistic growth in one of our earlier um, lessons, but we're gonna see it again and we're gonna actually do the calculations here. So the formula we need to know is NT is equal to that N naught times E to the RT. And that N naught or the N zero is going to be our initial population size. R will be the rate of growth, and here you do want to convert a percentage to an actual decimal. So if you had, you know, a growth rate of 2%, when you plug it into this formula, you want to put 0 0.02, okay? E is a constant, so it's in a graphing calculator as E. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you can just use 2.7 for that value. And then T will be your total amount of time in years. And then if you plug all that in, your final answer, which is NT, will be your final population size. Now, if you are given your final population size, obviously we can use algebra to manipulate these um, different variables to find them if, you know, given the correct parameters. So here's a sample that um, the time period is 20 years, and they have a 20 or a 2 20% growth rate because we've got right here is a 0.2. So we're going to, if we converted this from a percentage, it would be 20%. So we would plug this in. So our final is worth our initial population. So 
our initial population I'm assuming here was 20 individuals. And then we would times it by 2.7. This is that constant E value times 0.2, which is the rate, times 20, which is the um, amount of time it's taking. So if we um, simplify this down, we'll get 20 times 2.7 to the fourth. And then that gives us a final population of 1,092 mice. That means in 20 years, we can expect this population to go from 20 mice to 1,092 mice. So when we talk about factors that affect population change, there are different things to consider. So birth rates that can affect whether a population is growing or declining, so how many babies are being born. Infant mortality rate, so even though there's a lot of babies being born, how many of them actually live to mature and live to grow up. Access to family planning. Um, so can, do you have access to birth control? Can you choose how many babies you want? Access to good nutrition and food. Access to education, especially for women. When women have access to education, they choose to have less women and they choose to wait um, until later in their life to have um to have children. I think I said they choose to have less women. <laughs> they choose to have less children and they wait until later in life to have children. Postponement of marriage, waiting to get married, sanitation, so just overall having better access to health care, um, and also cultural influences. So the culture that you're in can influence whether or not you have children. So we talked about China's one child policy. That's a cultural influence not to have many children. Okay, so all of these are factors we need to take into consideration when we're talking about human population dynamics. Um, and so if you have any questions, let me know. And if not, we are going to practice some math problems.